Australia, a place of astounding beauty, fantastic wildlife, and home to an invader that's one of the most venomous creatures to humans. Australians think of these arachnids as the intruders, but in fact, they've been living here for millions of years. It's the people who've invaded this spider paradise, and they have no intention of leaving. The spiders aren't backing down either. You don't see them raiding as a swarm. They're solitary hunters that like to inhabit the same warm places we do. Gotcha. This is a funnel web spider. It's summertime in Sydney, Australia, and the invasion's just begun. Funnel web venom is strange. It has no effect on most mammals, like cats. But oddly, it is deadly to primates, like us. Funnel web venom is so toxic, it can kill within 15 minutes of a bite. Today, hospitals have antivenin on hand. But before it was developed, a funnel web bite meant you had to prepare for the worst. One morning, six-year-old Gavin Spencer was playing in his room with his best friend when the lethal invader crept in. This was before anti-venom was available in Australia. Made its way to the bedroom and found the Lego at the little home and burrowed its way down under there. Lego was such a big part of my life then, I really loved it. Unlike most spiders, it's the males in this species that pack the punch. His venom is five times more powerful than a female's. The spider that settled into Gavin's Legos was a male, burrowing into a makeshift nest. Nests are where the spider spends most of its time in the wild. It even hunts from them, blind. Instead of spinning traditional webs, it draws a silk trip line that radiates outwards to the above ground world. It's like going fishing. With a leg on the line, it waits for its victim to pass by. As soon as it feels the vibration of prey, it pounces. This is the life of the funnel web spider until summertime. That's when love is in the air and everything changes. The males leave their subterranean nest to find a girlfriend. They become restless, wandering Lotharios. Thousands upon thousands of them. And this is where the trouble begins for humans. While on their lover's sojourn, the spiders wander into houses burrowing into anything that looks like a dark nest. The invader probably thought Gavin's Legos were the nest of a potential mate. Now he was ready to defend his new turf. What happened next changed Gavin's life. It felt like a pinprick. I said to my friend Nick, I said, Nick, there's a spider in my Lego. And I said, I think it might have bitten me. That's, that's what my, my the, the prick was. And he said, oh, don't worry, Gavin. It's, um, spiders aren't poisonous. He was seven. Mm. So he was, uh, he was very knowledgeable. Funnel web venom first hits the lymphatic system, but after two minutes, it enters the bloodstream. Almost immediately, it began to cripple Gavin's nervous system. It is critical to stay calm after a funnel web bite to avoid increasing your heart rate. 
But Gavin ran up and down the stairs looking for his mother. He wanted her to take the spider away so he could continue playing. This accelerated the venom's effect. My mum went into my bedroom and she saw the spider there and she looked back at me and at this stage I was throwing up. And so she knew, she knew it was serious. We made it in hospital just in enough time for the poison to actually pass through my heart and that was very serious. My dad brought up the spider and said, here it is. And they said, that's the Sydney, Sydney funnel web. They have no any venom for that spider. The venom had circulated around Gavin's body, traveling through his heart. Doctors told his parents he had a 20% chance of surviving. When I saw mum and dad panicking, I saw the doctors running. Uh, they, they made me feel scared then because I I realized, oh, this is all for me. Something's wrong. The doctors gave him a transfusion and pumped the fluids out of his lungs. It worked. His six-year-old body fought back, and he beat the odds. It's, um, it's a deadly spider. I guess I have a respect for it, and... Uh, or, uh, however, if I, if I see one in my house, it's, it gets squashed, it's killed. I don't have much mercy on them when a creature is inside. The more people move into bug territory, the greater potential there is for close encounters of the venomous kind. Nowhere is this more evident than in the American Southwest, where man and beast live side by side. Meet Mr. Bean. Good morning. I have to be very, very quiet, because I don't want to wake this guy up. But this guy is really cool. Well, I woke him up. I woke him up. I'm going to get a little closer to him. My name's Roger Beam. I live in Tucson, Arizona, where wildlife is in my backyard, and I love it here. I got the camera only inches away from this snake's mouth. He knows bugs, he knows snakes, and he knows how to charm the camera. Western diamond back rattlesnake. <sighs> that was cool. We got big lizards, we got little lizards, and rattlesnakes on around. This is pretty cool. It's a hobby full of hazards and thrills. Keep going. But yeah, who's invading girl. whom? Get out of the road. Okay, let's see what else we can find. I, I guess when I'm out hiking, I, I kind of feel like Superman. Um, I know these animals aren't going to bite me. Uh, I'm smarter than they are. Roger's the kind of guy people call when they've been invaded by snakes or scorpions or spiders. Still looking for snakes, though. Snakes are healing monsters. Wish me luck. One day, Roger's friend called him to remove a Gila monster from his garage. More and more, these venomous lizards are showing up in odd places. I know, it's not a bug. But this invader story captures the turf wars going on between humans and wildlife perfectly. Gila monsters use their venom defensively. Venom doesn't flow through hollow fangs like a snake. Instead, their sharp teeth release the toxins through special grooves, then grind them into the bite. And a tenacious bite it is. Once they sink their teeth into your flesh, they do not want to let go. Like all reptiles, Gila monsters are cold-blooded. To regulate their temperature, they have to change their environment. It's too hot for them out in the desert most days, and that's why they become invaders. An easy way to cool off is to slink into someone's house, or in the case of Roger's friend, a garage. And so I went to his house uh, to, to remove the hill mass from their garage. I'm playing with it here. Um, here she's really feisty. 
Uh, she's got the mouth open. I've never, I've handled Gila monsters in the past, and generally they had been the sweetest, kindest animals. And so I'm letting her move around. It moves over a little bit more, and I grab it and bring it back around. And this thing swings around. But here, 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 watch it. She's got me. Let go, let go. Nails me on the finger and a, and a first reaction. I'm like, ah, you got me. No, no, we'll so, be all right. We'll be all right. You'll be all right. Call place and control. We need to find out. Put your, put your foot in there. Do you get it? I need a stick. A stick. How about this rock? So he gets this rock. There's the camera down on the ground laying okay, sideways. About 30 seconds this yellow monster has latched on to me. And it's only got me with the tip of its mouth. I'm thinking I'm going to be okay. Oh, yeah. To the doctor. You gotta go. I, I need to, to cover up this this what? Mm, with a paper towel or something. <clears throat> and within minutes from there, uh, I started vomiting. Uh, almost uncontrollably, I couldn't stop vomiting. Finally got me into Bill's car. We're on the way to the emergency room. My feet started to burn. Uh, my tongue started to swell up. I started sweating. At that point, I knew something was wrong. Doctors said they had never seen such a violent response to a Gila monster bite. If we had not gotten to the hospital in the, the amount of time that we did, my throat would have swelled up and would have cut off my airway, and that would have killed me. Roger had an extreme allergic reaction to the Gila venom. That Gila monster, he put me in check. And I'm not Superman, and I admire them. They're beautiful creatures. They're misunderstood creatures. Uh, they're definitely an important part to the ecosystem here in the Sonoran Desert. But I, I'm going to have to respect them from, from a distance. Uh, I'm told that if I... If I ever happen to get bit again, then I will die. In this case, it's not exactly clear who's the invader, man or beast. One thing is certain. Not much can stop Roger from poking around his desert haunts. Though from now on, he can look, but he can't touch. Invaders come in all sizes and packages. They swarm your neighborhood. They creep into your house. But the most stomach-turning invader is the kind that gets in your food. Meet Trip. He's a friend of mine who's squeamish about bugs. Come on, we have an ongoing battle. I try to get him used to the idea of bugs, he resists. We have bugs intimately involved in our everyday existence. No, uh, Phil, that's your life, not mine. This time, I'm invading his kitchen with my camera crew and a snack. Really a, an excellent cheese. You know, you like the cheese? It's good. Tasty. You know why it tastes so good? Why is that? Bugs, of course. Dude, would I lie to you? Go, go ahead, what? <laughs> really? You go, go ahead, what? <laughs> really? Go ahead, what? Really? Go ahead. Look at the, the rind. No! Oh, Phil! The rind is pulsating with the tiny creatures. The gray dust is their molted skin and feces. Cheese mites. These are eight-legged wonders, relatives of the spider. Cheese mites bore holes in the rinds of fancy cheeses and settle in for the duration of their month-long lives, eating, reproducing, defecating. They're considered an essential, even exquisite ingredient in some of the finest cheeses, like this patomulo. It seems cheese mites have good taste, and they taste good, too. Ah, jeez, Phil. There are no vacations in the school of life. And that's just the beginning. Let's see what goodies Tripp's got in his kitchen cabinets. 
。